I appreciate all y'all being here. We'll be very brief, uh, but at about 10.51 last night, one of our officers attempted a traffic stop on Montgomery uh, near the intersection with Louisiana. Um, the actual traffic stop happened in the Chevron parking lot where you saw the briefing was at this morning. Uh, as our officer uh, contacted the driver of the vehicle, he immediately noticed several knives uh, and what appears to be drug paraphernalia. Uh, fortunately for us, the officer who made the traffic stop is uh, CIT certified. Uh, we all understand what that means, uh, and that would be important. That's going to be very important for uh, what transpires for the next three plus three and a half plus hours. Because of his CIT certification, he was able uh, to build a rapport uh, and have decent communications with the driver of that vehicle. And after, uh, unfortunately, after several hours of talking and negotiating with that subject. Uh, the male uh, driver uh, decided to ingest uh, what we believe to be uh, an illegal drug, uh, then put his vehicle in reverse, crashing into one of our units, uh, and then fled south on Louisiana Boulevard, um, where he attempted to turn east into the Smith's parking lot. Uh, we're still uncertain of the facts there, whether he crashed by himself or we had vehicle vehicle to vehicle contact with him. Uh, to prevent him from getting into that parking lot but uh, where you saw the scene this morning uh, is where 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 this incident ended um, as the uh, you know his movements were stopped uh, and then once it stopped there the the driver of the vehicle once again barricaded himself in the vehicle uh, we once again attempt to establish communication with him uh, via negotiations uh, with with the CIT officer and at this point I believe a level higher than that, which is our CNT officers, um, uh, which have a higher level of training, uh, begin to communicate with the driver of the vehicle, hoping for a peaceful re resolution to this incident. Um, and again, after uh, I believe another hour or so, um, uh, let me back up a little bit. At that point, after he fled from the Chevron, our SWAT officers or our tactical officers were called. Uh, based on the charges that we now had on the subject, uh, they were able to deploy to assist our uniform personnel. So our TAC officers uh, arrived on scene uh, at the Smith's parking lot scene and took over the took over that scene from our uh, uniform personnel. Uh, our again, our CNT folks, TAC officers, tried to negotiate with the subject uh, for his peaceful surrender. Um, that doesn't happen the way uh, we had wished it uh, would have. Um, and at some point, our tactical officers uh, first utilized the flashbang and then secondly used a chemical munition to try to get him, uh, again, to resolve this peacefully. Uh, he did eventually exit through the passenger door of his vehicle, um, uh, but unfortunately he, ex he exited uh, with the machete. Um, uh, the tactical officers uh, first attempted to use less lethal, a beanbag round, uh, on the subject. We're still investigating this. Um, whether that was successful or not, I would assume it wasn't uh, because a short time later, two of our officers uh, fired uh, their duty rifles, um, hitting the suspect uh, who is now deceased. Um, our, our personnel are okay, thank goodness. Uh, and as I mentioned, the suspect is deceased. Obviously a very uh, um, uh, unfortunate sequence of events, uh, but I would briefly like to commend our personnel uh, for spending what appears to be three plus hours out there in the freezing cold uh, attempting to communicate and negotiate with this suspect, uh, like I said, to resolve this peacefully. Um, our officers, uh, the officers that fired or shot are obviously on administrative leave, uh, which is normal. Uh, I will not be naming them this morning. Uh, you all understand our process. We name them after they've been interviewed, so we will not be naming them nor will we be naming the suspect in this case today uh, because it's pending um, next of kin notification. Uh, MATF was called out to investigate this. They're out there now investigating that. Uh, and obviously upon conclusion of that investigation, it'll be turned over to the second judicial district attorney's office. Um, and then the one thing I would like to share with the community is that I would ask uh, that they be patient in that area of Louisiana um, and Montgomery uh, while we continue to investigate that to get that road opened up. So we would ask for their patience. Um, traffic's going to be a, be a little bit messed up for, for the next few hours. 
Um, that was what I had. If any of y'all have any questions, hopefully I'll be able to answer them, but I won't be able to get too specific because this is very early on in the investigation. Yes, sir. Seems like the, this is like the third OIS in that metro area involving a barricaded subject in a vehicle. Is this a new thing because of, of the drugs? People are taking the drugs and then they're you know, snapping out of it or coming to the hallucination and then it makes it a dangerous situation for you guys. I don't have the data in front of me, so I don't want to assume, but yeah, I mean, uh, I think barric people barricading in vehicles probably isn't a new phenomena. We may be paying a little bit more attention to it these days, uh, just based on some of the things going on in the Albuquerque area. But yeah, any any time you mix in drugs, uh, I think there, there's a possibility of that occurring. Yes, sir. Uh, that was good enough. Y'all didn't have one bone question, huh? I'll take that as a as a plus. Uh, again, thank you guys. I know it's cold out there, and I appreciate y'all being here early in the morning.